I woke up this morning, checked the news like I always do, and found out that New Zealand experienced a rather powerful earthquake, a magnitude 7.8, which is bound to be revised just a little bit. These aren't exact sciences. So what are earthquakes and why do they happen? I'm a petroleum engineering major here at UL, but I've taken about five or six geology courses. They kind of go hand in hand. We're going to be drilling into the earth, so we better know how the earth works and what we're drilling into. But geology courses have been my favorite courses by far here at my university, and that's kind of what I want to uh, pay tribute to in this video. I know I talk a lot about computers on this channel, but I want to diversify my portfolio a little bit and discuss something a little off topic, if you will. Give it a chance. This is Minute Science. We're going to try to tackle the subject in well, around three minutes. So our Earth is very much alive and active. It has three distinct layers, the crust, the mantle, and the core. The core is divided into two sub-layers, the outer core, which is comprised of a liquid iron and nickel, and the inner core, which is a solid iron and nickel. The outer core spins around the inner core and produces a magnetic field that shields us from solar radiation. As for the mantle, common misconception, I actually believe this for the longest time, the mantle is not comprised of a liquid. It's not just magma. It's it, it actually, most of it is a solid rock that behaves plastically because it's under intense pressures and heat. And on top we have the Earth's crust, of course, it's what we live on. It's very brittle. It doesn't move slowly over time like the mantle does. It moves very quickly in short amounts of time. That right there. Earthquakes. Earthquakes occur in the crust, not in the mantle, but the mantle influences where earthquakes occur and how frequently they occur. Take the Ring of Fire, for example. The Pacific Rim is constantly subducting under very light continental crust. It's comprised mainly of granite, whereas ocean crust is comprised more of gabbro and basalt. It's much denser, so it sinks when it's pushed against something that's much lighter. Another example, the entire western seaboard of South America is considered a subduction zone because the Nazca Plate off to its west is subducting underneath the light granitic crust comprising the South American plate. Remember, denser crust sinks, that's how gravity works. As this dense crust reaches the upper layers of the mantle, what we call the asthenosphere, it partially melts, rises to the surface, and creates volcanoes and what we call the Andes Mountains. The Nazca plate is one of the fastest moving tectonic plates on Earth, moving at roughly three to four centimeters per year. And I mean, picture that, it doesn't sound like a lot of movement, right? But that's an entire slab of Earth moving that far every year in a decade or a century, it definitely adds up. It also builds up a lot of static friction. Remember, the crust is not as ductile and malleable as the mantle is, so it builds up a lot of tension over time and then snaps instantly, and those snaps are what produce earthquakes. So after a prolonged buildup of static friction, over time that coefficient will be overcome and several earthquakes will occur around that zone of movement. So there are essentially two mechanisms driving earthquake forces here on Earth, and they go hand in hand. The first is convection. The mantle is constantly moving, even though it's not a liquid, it's still moving. It rises when it partially melts, and it sinks when it solidifies. So the mantle, picture it moving uh, up and down. It's moving down into the outer core where it's much hotter. That rock melts and then rises because it becomes less dense. And then as it solidifies, it becomes more dense and begins to sink back down again. Okay, those convection forces occurring in the mantle move the crust above it. Now, if the crust behaved like the mantle did, we wouldn't have earthquakes per se because the crust would just stretch and move in response to the forces acting underneath it. But the crust is stubborn and brittle and often refuses to budge unless severe forces act on it over a prolonged amount of time, building up stress and that coefficient of static friction. At this point, the crust gives in and slips along a fault line or plate boundary, resulting in one severe earthquake followed by several aftershocks, which is kind of just that plate settling into its new position. Hopefully you learned something from this video or at least enjoy the topic. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this or if I should move on to something else entirely. This is Salazar Studio. Thanks for learning with us.